Welcome back to Ladies of Another View. And as promised, we're going to bring on in just a minute Scott Shepard. He's the director of the Free Enterprise Project, which is a program of the National Center for the Public Policy Research. Just a dynamo of an organization. It's a mouthful. It is. But it, it, it deserves to be a mouthful because they are involved in so many different things, making a difference and stirring things up. And that's what Scott likes to do, right? So welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you so much, ladies. And listen, you have to remember at the beginning of this, uh, this segment that in D.C., the rule is that the longer somebody's title, the less important they are. So with that long of a title, you know that I'm, uh, I'm cleaning the trash on Friday. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I'm going to shorten your title at some point then because you deserve, you're doing a lot. Yes. Um, you're going to bat, you're going to bat for the rest of us against these woke companies. Tell us about your latest fight or, you know, I don't know, challenge. Sure, sure. We had, to, there, uh, Apple had its annual general meeting, its shareholder meeting uh, last week. And we uh, had a proposal on their ballot, a shareholder proposal. Uh, asking it to look into the fact that it seems to discriminate quite a bit on the basis of a viewpoint against its employees, really against everybody, but the proposal was about uh, employees. And of course, their response was, gosh, golly, we don't, we don't discriminate <laughs> on viewpoint, and so we don't need to include protections against viewpoint discrimination. Now, that's a very dumb argument for a, for a number of reasons. First. Apple presumably doesn't, I mean, it does, but it pretends it doesn't discriminate on all sorts of other factors, including race and sex, but it has those protections in its, uh, in its employment um, uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, so, so that argument doesn't wash. But additionally, Apple discriminates by viewpoint all over the place. Consider, just one, by one example, uh, they have a, a, a matching program, but employees want to give to charities, Apple will match whatever the gifts are. But there are a couple of exceptions. First of all, you can't give to political campaigns, which isn't charity anyway, it's taxable. You can't give to your sororities or fraternities. And you can't give to any organizations connected with religion. Now, those are three very different things. And by necessity, it means that, uh, that Apple is discriminating on the basis of religion, which is unconstitutional and illegal um, in its matching program. But, it really has this discrimination spread all the way throughout its uh, uh, throughout throughout the company because it builds the discrimination into human rights policies and other policies. It tells employees the position they have to take on on hot button issues, including all of the sort that we've talked about, all of the sort that ESG pushes. And then internally, there's a review process that if you're accused of having violated their thought policies and an investigation starts, then suddenly an employee gets fired if they talk to anybody about it. So they pretend they're open and, and uh, nonpartisan and have viewpoint protections. Instead, it's all just a lie. So they just, they call it viewpoint diversity and they define what hate means and they define all of the parameters of this and call it policy. But when does it go from policy to actually breaking the law where there's consequences? Well, you're exactly right. Another gimmick that these, these uh, clowns use is to take shareholder money, donate it to the Southern Poverty Law Center, which takes organizations and ideas that don't fit the woke mold. The Poverty Law Center then labels them as hate, and it turns out that expressions of hate are forbidden for employees. So it's just politics and pure politics funded by shareholder, shareholder money. Now, most states don't have... Um, state law protections against discrimination uh, by viewpoint. But all of these assertions by Apple eventually do add up to a uh, um, to something like an employment contract. So there might be actions that employees can already take. But more importantly, they're lying to um, investors. They're lying to the real owners of the company, uh, the shareholder. And so it's hoped that there could be some shareholder action. We, we might be able to take it to sue them in the future to uh, to at least require them not to spend shareholder assets to discriminate in this way. Yeah, it seems like it's coming down to the shareholders have to make these companies accountable. Has there ever been any employees that have talked about this that they felt they were their rights were violated because their views were maybe more conservative? Has there anything come out on that? Well, you know, it's funny. We, uh, 
put in a shareholder uh, proposal years ago asking for um, some kind of viewpoint diversity on Apple's board of directors, which is as left as it can be. But, but the response to that, uh, my predecessor, Justin Danhoff, the, the meetings were still live then. He went to the meeting. He, he uh, uh, submit, uh, defended our proposal. He asked the question. And in the course of the discussion, it turned out that uh, an employee said, listen, I'm not talking about me. She knew she'd get fired. But I have a friend here at Apple who, who feels discriminated against constantly because she's, she's a conservative. And Tim Cook, in that smarmy, leftover Southern <laughs> accent, I can't stand listening to Tim Cook. But at all events, he got up and said, well, gosh, golly, that doesn't happen. But, but come, she should come to me and we'll take care of her. And uh, a complaint was actually made and absolutely nothing happened. So lies across the board at Apple. Mm. That's unfortunate that that they get to the point where they're um, courageous enough to come forward and risk their job, and then they get dismissed just off the cuff like that. So do you think that any of the policies or any of the board members' situations will change anytime soon? Well, I think that if, if Apple's left to its own device, the answer is no. Yeah. But as, as I said a minute ago, some states have some protections uh, against viewpoint discrimination by publicly traded companies. And what we'd like to see and what some states may be moving toward is adding those protections to their state civil rights. Law. And of course, uh, uh, companies uh, have to follow not only federal civil rights laws, but state. And so if, if some states and if you in Dakota want to want to think about this, that would be great. Uh, uh, enact viewpoint non-discrimination as part of civil rights laws and then and then drag these companies in when they violate those laws that would be that would be the best um, motive the best kick in the butt uh, for Apple to get moving you know it just seems like that's what has to happen because companies mm -hmm. everywhere have gone woke mm -hmm. and the yeah. conservatives are the ones that are being discriminated against and I'm old enough to I can remember those used to be our founding values, you know, God, yes. family, good community, religion was included in your life, and now those are the, the, the hateful groups, right? Um, if you right. stand that's for what anything. Def define this hate. It's yeah, if you yes. stand for anything they don't agree with, that's hateful. So, um, but anyways, we're going to talk about BlackRock coming up next and see what they're doing with all their equity and diversity, so don't go away.